you know, we know who built these cathedrals. I mean, the, there's these guilds, particularly in France, that there's still guilds that exist today. Uh, one is called the Children of Solomon. The other is called the Children of the Monster Jacques. And both say that they originally came from the building force of the Templars. So um, there was a very heretical Gnostic idea that was built into these cathedrals, however, that I want to just mention. It's worth knowing. Uh, so you have these cathedrals of Notre Dame, right? What does Notre Dame mean? It's Our Lady, right? So if we accept that this giant cathedral is Our Lady, or Mary, you'll notice that the cathedral is laid out so that, uh, you know, the baptismal font at the area of the belly button, the, the choirs at the area of the lungs, the priest speaks from the area of the heart, and the sacrament is kept in the area of the forehead. And when you leave that church, you're going through the arch, through that brick here. This means you are being born as Christ. Right? That Christos is in you. And this is what made you a true Christian, right? And uh, I don't know how they got away with that. So, <laughs> In the philosophies of most nations, there has been this recognition uh, that the solar system, the human body, and space itself are identical in law, identical in principles, differing only in magnitudes, and that we can explore them a little more carefully if we so desire. We have now the possibility of man exploring God through examining the universe. And uh, not only this possibility, but to the Kabbalists and most other mystics, the valid right to do this. Even though it might upset some of the best laid schemes of uh, theological institutions. In the temples that were built in Greece, Egypt, India, China, and many other places, the symbolism of the solar system was built into the architecture, so that it was there in every case. The Temple of Solomon, the mysterious temples of India and China, were all like the Cathedral of Christianity, solar symbols. And in these solar symbols, as in the Greek mysteries, the human being himself now plays the role of the sun. In other words, the, uh, the gear of the sun becomes the symbol of the life of the individual. and vital points. And in this septenary, the pineal gland occupies the position of the sun, forming a minute solar system around which through the ventricular orifices, uh, the orbits of the ancient planets move in their magnetic fields. Therefore, there were these seven rings, concentric circles, ascending in order from the face of the earth through the orbits of the moon and then Mercury, then Venus, then the sun, then Mars, 
then Jupiter, and finally Saturn. Above Saturn, they had the Empyrean, the world of the heavenly realms and regions, the abodes of deity. Now Osiris has as a symbol an eye, and that eye, of course, is the sun. This one-eyed god has been called the sun god, and many ancient people insist that the sun deity is always properly represented with one eye. In the Kabbalah of the Hebrews, the god of Israel which neither slumbers nor sleeps, is always presented symbolically in profile so that only one eye is visible. There was a very heretical Gnostic idea that was built into these cathedrals, however, that's worth noting. It's worth noting. It's worth noting. It's worth noting. It's worth noting. of his creator. Thus to see man in a sense is to see the creator.
back to the modern world and we can say, but there doesn't seem to be any proof of this. There doesn't seem to be any reason why we should expect to find something strange and mysterious at the top of this mysterious ladder that was known to be pointing up to what the Egyptians called the Jewel of Seven Stars. This ladder, if we are to believe Hermes, the great uh, Egyptian uh, mystic, the thermoturgist, of whom, whose life nothing is known. But anyway, in his emerald tablet, Hermes declares that the above is like the, like the below, the superior is like the inferior, the lesser is like the greater, the greater is like the lesser. All things follow one immense pattern. And if anyone can break the mystery of that pattern in any one point, any one level, he has the key to the whole mystery. the sun god, and many ancient people insist that the sun deity is always properly represented with one eye. In the Kabbalah of the Hebrews, the god of Israel which neither slumbers nor sleeps is always presented symbolically in profile so that only one eye is visible. <laughs> 